Hi and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. Today we're looking at the Altair 5X unit, Bluetooth. I'm going to turn this on and then we'll get into some things about the monitor. So press and hold this middle button. Screen will turn on. It's going to give you a beep. There it goes. Now you can let go of the button. And then while that's going, let's get our other stuff together. Now at a certain point it's going to ask us to block the pump. Uh, so while we're going through that, let's check our through a few things here. We'll make sure we have a demand flow regulator, our cylinder of calibration gas, and some tubing. Okay, so now let's check in the pump. And so it's going to, when we put our finger over this, it's going to block that pump and it's going to tell the system this is what a block condition looks like. And when it detects that, it's going to let us go forward. So here we go, I'm going to block this. You can hear the pump stop. And now it says pump test pass. So now if that didn't pass for you and you did it just like this, there's probably something going on in here. Uh, it could just be that it, the gasket isn't in the right. Maybe someone didn't put the filters in. So you can check that, unscrew these two screws, take it out, check, make sure it's okay, and put it back on there. It's going to go through startup. It's going to tell you some stuff about the monitor. It'll tell you the alarms, what sensors are installed, etc. This is a four gas plus chlorine unit that I've got right here. Today we're not going to go through the chlorine sensor. We're just going to go through the four. And did you remove the? Okay, so <laughs> one of my guys removed the chlorine sensor, so I didn't have to give that spiel. Uh, now I've given the spiel, but it's okay. So it's going to go through the four gases. This is just a four gas unit. It's a standard H2S, carbon monoxide, LEL, and oxygen unit. It's set up on the pentane curve, so it's not going to be reading on the methane curve. Some other units will. This one uses a pentane curve, and it calibrates with not actual pentane, but pentane simulant, which I'll talk a little bit about when we talk about the calibration gas here. So to make sure we've got everything we need, we've got our demand flow regulator. I recommend a demand flow instead of a fixed flow for this unit because it has a pump. Uh, when you try and use a fixed flow, regulator to calibrate a pumped unit. A lot of times it'll be blocked when it's not supposed to, and it never really flows the exact right amount of gas here. Uh, so now it's asking me for a fresh air setup. We're going to hit no on this. Uh, I don't like the fresh air setup. It's a quick zero. Uh, nothing really wrong with doing it as long as you're in clean air. Uh, it's just not something I prefer. I like doing a full zero, and I'll, I'll walk you through that process here in just a moment. So demand flow instead of a fixed flow. And you want to do that because on the fixed flows, because they're only flowing at one rate, it never exactly matches your pump. Even if you ordered them both to be the same, a lot of times as the pump ages, it'll change. It'll either go slower or faster. And that fixed flow, it's either going to push too much gas or it's going to not give it enough gas. And either way, not giving it enough gas, it's hard on your pump in here. Uh, it may, it's got the engine's got to work really hard on it. Uh, the motor, not the engine. But if you're giving it too much gas, what happens is there's rubber gasket seals in there, and it pushes gas on those, and you don't want to do that. It's going to weaken your seals over time. So let's install this in the cylinder. Just screw it in there in the top. This is called a C10 connection. So you'll see these on here. You'll see them as part number with a, the C10 fitting, and then what that refers to is this type of fitting that's on these calibration gas cylinders. Okay. Let's take our tubing. Run that on here. Sometimes it's a little bit tight. Uh, this one's been worked quite a bit, so a little softer. Uh, you only really want to go past that first groove there. You don't want to go to the second barb. Uh, if you start going too far back this way, when you, so you can see that a little clear. When if you go too far, when you go to pull it off, it'll actually tighten around this, and it'll it'll be a real pain to get that off. So make sure you just go on there, just enough to get it on. You don't want it to slip off, but just enough. All right, now. While we got the cylinder in our hand, let's check those calibration gas values. So for this unit, you want to have 20 parts per million hydrogen sulfide, 60 parts per million carbon monoxide, 58% LEL pentane simulant. Your cylinder might also say 1.45% methane by volume. And the reason for that is they use the pentane curve on this unit so that it's more sensitive to other gases in the air that aren't methane. But they use methane to test the sensor and the reason for that is sometimes when you have pentane in a calibration gas mix, your monitor will calibrate to pentane just fine, but if you see natural gas, it won't show the proper response. So it could be poison to methane, but not poison to pentane. Uh, and if you search methane versus pentane calibration, I've got another video on that that you might find interesting. 
So next component is oxygen, 15%, and then nitrogen balance. And the second thing you want to do is you want to check this expiration date. That is a hard expiration date. Depending on how your cylinder label looks, it might be in a different place, but you always want to respect that. Once that's gone, the cylinder's done, and it's time to order a new one. Okay, now let's get into calibration mode here. So I'm going to press this right button and turn the screen on. So if you see, you've got a bump and cal. We're going to do cal. We'll do a bump after we do the calibration, and I'll show you how that's done. So press and hold the right button. Now it says zero calibration. Yes, FAS, or no. FAS is that fresh air setup that we were, sh we were looking at earlier. It's basically a low tolerance zero. If your zero tolerance is here uh, for how much it can adjust the sensor to make it be a, a proper zero, the FAS is like here. It, uh, it just It's really only meant to get when you're first starting up the sensors to zero. Okay? So, let's go back here. We're going to say cal. So I'm going to press and hold. Zero calibration? Yes. We're going to press the left button. Okay, now it's going through the zero. So one thing that's interesting about this unit is the LEL sensor has two sets of two beads. And with those two sets, most monitors have one set of two beads. And what this unit does is it actually switches and at first it uses the one set, and then every time you zero it swaps to the other set back and forth. So they actually recommend that you zero and calibrate this two times when you're doing your calibration. Uh, it's something that not a lot of people know to do, but if you read the manual, it's in there. Uh, so it's just something that you want to make sure that you do. In this video, we're only going to do it once, and then we're going to show a bump test, but just know that the thing to do is to calibrate it, zero and calibrate it, wait, you know, five, ten minutes or so, and then go back and zero and calibrate it again as part of your process. And the screen here says sensor refresh right now. So that's MSA's version of a zero. So this is what the screen is reading right now. This is what the sensors are, are it's getting from the unit. So it's had a little bit of zero drift here. Once this finishes, it's going to pull that to zero, and it's going to give us a zero calibration pass right there. Excellent. So next step here, we have a span calibration. Uh, yes or no. We're going to hit yes on the left button. Then we're going to grab the tubing. And we're going to put the tubing over here. You want to use a short length of tubing. Uh, this is about as long as I would go. Uh, honestly, the shorter the better. You just you want to get the gas to the monitor. Anytime you have the space here, you're kind of wasting it. So what the monitor is doing now is it's reading the gas in here, and this is the value that the sensors think they have. You, you'll notice it takes a little time for these to come up. And that's because it takes time for the gas sensors to respond. So there's a term in the industry called T90 time. And what that is is the time it takes to get to 90% of the gas that the sensor is going to see. Uh, so what will happen is if you look at the spec sheets for different monitors, you're going to see that some of the spec sheets will have like a T90 of 15 seconds, some might have 30 seconds, and some that are exotics like chlorine dioxide, you know, that might be T90 time is 60 seconds to get up there. And then once you get that 90% that time, your response curve levels off. So it takes a lot longer to get those last few per million of gas out of the percent. Okay, so now we've passed. The unit's going to sh show this on the next screen. This is what we're now reading out of this cylinder. So it's calibrated to be exactly what the cylinder is. We're going to pop this tubing here. And we're going to let this come back down. And these should all come down to around zero relatively quickly. Okay. There we go. This oxygen is going to drop to 20.8. Uh, one quirk of MSA units is they use 20.8 for oxygen instead of 20.9, which you'll see on a number of other units out there. Okay, now we're back down to 000 and 20.8. Normally, we would wait about five minutes. Even though it says zero, there's still gas in the sensors that is being cleared out. It's just kind of hidden by the software. Uh, so just know that it's taking a few more minutes to get out of there. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do the bump test. Uh, when you, if you're going to do yours, all I'm saying is that you should be waiting about five minutes or so after you do your calibration. So we're going to do our bump test. To bump test on this unit, there's two different types of bump tests. Uh, this unit has a software bump in here that it will record it. That way in your records, you'll have a record that you've done this bump test. There's another type of bump test that I like to do on this unit. And part of the reason is that when you do the software bump, it doesn't show your, your 
uh, your strobe flashers, it, you don't really hear the horn and the vibrating alarm. You don't get to experience those. And part of a proper bump test, you want to know that the alarms are going off and everything's working properly. This horn's loud enough it's not plugged up or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to show you both. First we're going to do the software bump test and then I'll, I'll show you the bump test that's just a, a quick uh, qualitative bump. It's not quantitative, it's just meant to check sensor response. But here we go, press the bump. Bump test, we're going to say yes, middle button. Go ahead and put on our tubing. You'll see how quick this is. Tubing's on. Bump test done. So it only takes a few seconds to run that bump test. So now these values will drop back down. Uh, part of what the bump test does is it turns the alarms off for a second here. So we're just going to wait a, wait a little bit. I believe it's 30 seconds that it turns that off for. Uh, so we're just going to wait a minute and let, let this sit. Uh, now I'm going to show you the normal bump test. This is what I would do every day. This is what we did before software bumps were a thing. Uh, back, you know, five to ten years ago, when you would do a bump test, you'd usually have to write it down on a piece of paper and, you know, initial it and date it. Uh, now all of that is tracked in this software here, and you can get it off on data logs if you go in through the IR on this unit. So that gives it enough time. I'm going to show you this is how we would do bump tests like a standard bump. Go ahead and put the tubing on. Watch your values go up. Now you're hearing the alarms, so that's important. So that's step one, checking you've got flashing reds, and I can feel the vibrating alarm going off. Now I check, I make sure that these sensors have all moved. They don't have to be exactly right on. I don't need 100% response here. I'm just checking, did they go in the right direction? Are they active? And they are, so I'm gonna pull the gas off. And now a sign that that had been failed and let's say, for instance, I put that gas on and the LEL didn't go up, or it only went up to like 5 or something along those lines, some small amount. Or maybe oxygen didn't drop. So that would be a symbol. I'm going to reset that. That would be a sign of a failed bump test. In that case, you would either recalibrate or you might need to pull, pull the unit out of service. So if you have any questions about that, you know, feel free to give us a call. My number here is 734-956-956. 0539 and the support email is support at idealcalibrations.com. Feel free to give us a call even if you just have questions and we'd appreciate it if you like or subscribe. Uh, ask us any questions in the comment and we'd be happy to answer you there. Thank you much. You guys have a great day and stay safe.